Welcome to UFC Connected. For the UFC's third visit to Europe in 2018, the Octagon returned to the German city of Hamburg. On a night that provided us with intriguing results, it'll mostly be remembered for the arrival of new talent and the emergence of new contenders. Let's look back at the reactions from the fighters and their teams in our Fight Night follow-up. The world-famous Octagon has arrived back in Hamburg, a beautiful city, and over the years has been a celebrated town for combat sports. For the women, by unanimous decision, Lee Yu Ping Yu Hai! I think we don't have any particular people. I want to go up and up, and then go up and up and up and up and up. Oh. oh, nice work there by Stojic. Kimball's on his back. These oh, are look at shot. Oh, shots. This could be done. Oh, Kimball's on it. With Lee Carfields. Gets the stoppage in the very first round of his debut. Wow. That's my man. Don't. Don't. Don't you have I don't know why he's shot. He's done. This is a small victory for me. I want to... Um, more bi biggest things th than that. I want to be number one. I want to make history for my people and my country, and I will do that. Oh, that's it. Right hand there from Bermudez. Oh, that's going to be tight. Davy Grant's going to oh, struggle no. to get out of that. Wow! Manny Bermudez puts dangerous Davy Grant to sleep. Yo. I felt like we could surprise him and it weren't exactly like we planned. I wish he grounded pounded to finish rather than jump on the sub, but that's his signature move, so he has to do it. Uh, you know, I honestly don't think it could have gone any better. If you ask me, I, I outstruck a striker. <laughs> <laughs> Alexander Volkic! I'm here to stay, and I'm here to prove that I belong to the top. Believe me, remember my name. I'm coming for the winner by unanimous decision, Ned Smiler. Ned! It, uh, it was a tough fight, and I expected actually. Uh, that kid, he was good, you know what I mean? He came and uh, came to fight, and uh, but you know, I think I uh, just had a bit of a better game plan than him, and that's what secured it in the end. So yeah. For the winner, by unanimous decision, Bartos the Butcher Babinski! I knew that he uh, will start uh, the fight something like this. But the plan uh, was to put my opponent on the ground and keep him on the ground and beat him. And I made it. <laughs> For the winner by split decision, Damir Hadjoven! It was tough to read because he's a tough guy. He took my shots, I feel my hand, you know, like, damn, this guy, man, he can take a punch, you know? Yeah, No, 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 it was good. This guy has a lot of balls, you know, so I only respect him. And we're now friends. I have nothing against anybody in UFC. That's why UFC MMA is the best fight fight in the world. No, no uh, left unfinished business. Yeah! 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 For the winner, by unanimous decision, Nazrat Hakpara! I think it means a lot because he fought somebody with a lot of experience. You know, Diakes is a very dangerous guy, very seasoned, uh, scary guy. He has so many KOs, but luckily we have Hydro here, the number one striking coach in the game, and uh, he takes care of business. But really prepared, Nazarat, perfect. You know, for the kicks, for the counters, beautiful preparation. Me and my brother, we trained a lot. We had amazing, amazing game plan from me and Fira Zahabi. Amazing striking. He didn't use his uh, wrestling and uh, BJJ. He didn't uh, need it. Well, of course, we are in Hamburg. That's our hometown. Yes. We're born here. We're raised here. All my friends are here. All my family are here. 
the arena is packed with everybody from us. Today it's a really, really good day. I did not estimate him, he was a tough guy, you know, a good striker, but I believe in me, you know, I have a lot of confidence because I work so hard, I have the best coaches, so this gives me a lot of confidence. You can beat everybody, it's just a human, two arms, two legs, fear nobody, you know, give your best. Always stay humble, you know, always stay humble, people. For the winner by split decision, Daddy Hot Chocolate Robbers! And I just want to say, Neil Magna, I've seen your ass, bro. I'm not impressed at all. So let's get it on, because you want my ticket to the top ten, brother. If he's game enough to take the fight, if he wants some work, he'll take the fight. If he doesn't, he's going to walk away from it, and you know he's going to be one of them in the top ten that's going to walk around saying, nah, I don't want to fight, I want, I want something that's going to be worth my while. So, but whatever, whatever comes ahead, I'll take it as well, because I'm that type of fighter. Oh, it's so hard. It's so hard. It's so hard. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Proud of you, man. You did it. For the winner, by unanimous decision, Marcin Tibor Tapura! Oh, sorry. <laughs> For the winner, by unanimous decision, Abu! Yeah, the guy is, is very, very experienced, and he was very tall and very big. I was two times in the submission and came out, and that's a show how real to be a fighter. And uh, I'm so proud, and I appreciate it. You got Corey! Don't no stop, Corey! Don't no stop! Corey, up, stop, up, Corey! Up, Corey, up! Yes! Beautiful. All three judges score this contest 30 27. For the winner, by unanimous decision, Corey Overtime Anderson. Anthony Lionheart Smith gets an opportunity, late notice call up, to fight another former champion, a Hall of Famer, and Mauricio Shogun Hua. Oh, and again, Shogun's on his heels. Here comes Smith. Declaring the winner by knockout, Anthony Lionheart Smith. Uh, I think the fight went pretty much to plan. I, I was able to stay patient and, and circle and, and kind of get his timing down and his, and his range. And I started fainting a little bit and started timing him and timed him on it, you know, right before he was ready to sprint, to sprint and caught him with a big right hand and just went, you know, just went in for the finish after that. Shogun didn't have to fight me, and he didn't have to give me that opportunity. And he could have, he could have used his ranking and his position in in the UFC to to keep me down, you know. And he didn't. And he's just a fighter's fighter. And, and I wish I could have been, able, I wish I would have been able to tell him that. I, I want to get in and get out, you know. I, and it's nothing that I'm really conscious of. Like I just go in and fight, and and I do what my coaches tell me to do. And recently, that's been super, you know, it's been super fast first round finishes, and and hopefully we can keep that going. Makwan Amirkani is one of the most promising European prospects on the UFC roster. Back in January 2015, he made his debut in front of 30,000 Swedish fans in Stockholm's Tele2 Arena. The man they call Mr. Finland wanted to make an instant impact in his first UFC outing, and he certainly delivered. Let's relive that moment with the man himself. It was 2015, my UFC debut, UFC Stockholm against Andy Ogden. When we walked to the fight, a lot of emotion was going on. I was happy that I had that chance to even be there. 
a day before I decided that I will show the world that they will know about Mr. Finland's name. Bruce Buffer was watching me like this. My job is done, now it's yours. And I was like, now it's time. When I was looking at Andy and I saw him wiping his feet, and I realized he's in panic. I already got him. I look at a couple of his fights, I saw that he runs to the center and he will stand there. I said, there's a good place for flying me. I thought, let me shake my arms a little bit and pretend that I'm lazy. Let's take a few slow steps and let's just fasten up and boom. Coming right across with a huge knee. Powerful flying knee. Oh, he's hurt. Oh, my God. Trying to push him right here. It's on. Just right Wow. I have never done flying knee. Never, never in my life, not even in the training. Just saw it in a Van Damme movie or something like this. And when I realized I hit him and it hurt him, I just pushed him against the cage. I pretend that I'm going for a takedown, but I hit him with my first uppercut in my whole MMA career. <laughs> I saw the ref, he is looking at me and I'm looking at him. His eyes tells me that you need to do a little bit more so I can end the fight. I said, okay, let me just slap him a few times. <laughs> and the referee came, I said, yes. Amir Khani in his UFC debut. One of the fastest finishes in UFC history. Eight seconds. And when they told me that I got the bonus money, and I knew my life will change now. The Clark winner. I remember so many, you know, people were trying to just touch me and hug me, and uh, the security were like, can't do that, but I was like, F that. I jumped in, I let the people hug me, and best time of my life, I can say. My name is Makwan Amikani, and that was my moment. The anticipation and expectation of a big knockout adds to the undeniable attraction of the UFC heavyweight division. Over the years, we've been treated to a number of heavyweight wars that have ended in the very first round. So we gave UFC analyst Dan Hardy the task of picking just five, but with a little twist. <laughs> Everyone likes a heavyweight fight, and when you see these big guys square off, we always expect someone to get knocked out pretty quickly. In this list, I've picked my favorite first round finishes in the heavyweight division, but not the simple one punch knockout finishes. That's not good enough for this top five list. This is the list of guys that didn't have it all their way. They started the fight well, they got caught, they had to adapt, they came back from the brink, and they got the finish then. Let's get into it. First up, it's the heavyweight title fight between Brock Lesnar and Cain Velasquez from UFC 121. This is the biggest fight in UFC heavyweight history. Brock Lesnar was a very intimidating physical specimen, and he brought a presence to the octagon that we'd never seen before in this division. Lesnar, Velasquez, heavyweight title is on the line. As soon as the fight started, Brock Lesnar, with that power, charged across the octagon at Cain Velasquez. Lesnar looks to tie up early right away. But Cain Velasquez, with his toughness and durability, was able to weather that early storm. Let's see how well Cain fights off his back. Cain back up to his feet. The thing that defines Cain Velasquez is not only his ability to endure, but his ability to recover and turn the tide on his opponent. So when Brock Lesnar started to become discouraged and slow down, then Cain Velasquez started his wrestling offensive. Cain put a beating on Brock Lesnar, and after that knee dropped him. He killed up in a ball. He didn't want any of it. Lesnar covering up. Velasquez. It is over. Velasquez is the UFC heavyweight champion. 
It was amazing to see a guy smaller and less muscular absolutely dominate a juggernaut like Brock Lesnar. Next up, it's another title fight between Stipe Miacic and Alistair Overeem at UFC 203. Stipe was defending his belt for the first time in front of his hometown crowd in Cleveland, Ohio, against a resurgent Alistair Overeem. Here we go! Stipe, clearly feeling the pressure, was pushing forward immediately against Alistair Overeem, who was doing a half lap of the octagon to try and get away from him. Oh, he tagged him. He got the guillotine. Can he finish him right here, right now? He's out! Over him, who thought he got the fight in the bag, was then on the back foot with Stipe peppering him up against the fence. Right hand by Stipe, Alistair's in trouble. He threw a kick to the inside of Stipe's leg, and that was his mistake. Stipe on top. Hammer fist by Stipe. Big ground and pound. Alistair's in all sorts of trouble here, Mike. Alistair's in oh, he's out. It is all over. Stipe Miocic remains the heavyweight champion. It was beautiful to see not only Stipe feel like a true heavyweight champion after defending the belt for the first time, but to see him do it in front of his hometown crowd and how much it meant to those Ohio fans. Coming in at number three, Frank Mir versus Todd Duffy from July 15, 2015. Todd Duffy was a real physical specimen. He was riding a three-fight win streak into this fight, and he was talking about how Frank Mir was the old heavyweight, and that he was the new wave, and Frank just kind of took it in his stride. If you want to touch gloves, touch them now. Best of luck, you both of you step back. Todd Duffy, three UFC wins. Right, took go. him two minutes and 44 seconds combined. Frank Mir immediately put his foot on the gas and pressured Todd Duffy. Nothing conservative about Mir's approach here in the early going. Vintage Frank Mir, we know him as a submission machine, but this was one of the fights where you can tell that Frank had been working really hard on his boxing, and it really paid off. Oh! Big jab there from Duffy, and Frank Mir is hurt now. Oh! Down goes Duffy, out cold! Frank Mir does it again! Rock him, sock him, robots here! Oh my goodness! Frank took a second, he knew that the power was coming, so he planted his back foot, and as Todd Duffy threw the right hand, Mir slipped out the way of it and threw his own straight left down the pipe. And when he landed on Todd Duffy, pff, it looked like a redwood being felled. It was amazing to watch him fall completely unconscious and Frank Mir take the knockout victory. My number two pick is a fight we all know and love. Czech Congo versus Pat Barry, UFC Live in 2011. And we are underway. One of my favorite fights in the heavyweight division. Two really decorated kickboxers with knockout power standing in the center of the octagon and throwing down. It was obvious at about two minutes in that Pat Barry was getting impatient from Czech Congo backing up. So he pushed forward to force Czech Congo against the fence. Oh, Big right hand! Most referees would have jumped in and stopped it there, but Dan Mergliotta, to his credit, allowed the fight to play out. Czech Congo was able to scramble back to his feet after threatening a takedown. Oh, he's out. He's out. Nope. Still oh, man. Barry, not wanting to let him off the hook, continued the charge forward. He's in big trouble, though. Barry, he's here to finish the fight. Oh, he's taking the run! Barry's out! Oh, he lands all over! The thing that nobody expected, especially Pat Barry, a big right hand from Czech Congo clipped him across the top of the head and rocked him. And as Barry relined his center, Czech Congo hit him with an uppercut, and that was game, set, and match. It is one of the most amazing comebacks that we've ever seen in UFC history, particularly in the heavyweight division. It's amazing that Czech Congo was not only able to get back to his feet so many times, but was able to muster the power to throw a knockout shot and win the fight in the end. And my number one pick, Andre Olovsky versus Travis Brown, UFC 187, back in 2015. This will go down as one of the greatest fights of all time, and it all happened in one round. Both of these guys knew each other very well. Former training partners, they used to live together. Very, very good friends. But fortunately for us fans, they put all that to one side just for one night and threw down like none of us expected. Oh, we got run! A last Oh, back fist! Again. Oh! The oh. Him again! The legs of Travis Brown were gone. 
He backed up to the fence, and then out of nowhere, as Oloski crashes forward, Travis Brown comes out with a big shot. We thought he'd scored the knockout punch, but Andre Oloski showing his toughness back to his feet. Oh! With a combination. Travis is so wobbly, he can barely stand up. Andre with the other Beautiful uppercut. Up. Right it. It. It's in. It's in. Unbelievable. Unbelievable performance by Andre Orlovsky. You're going to be hard pressed to find a one round fight in any weight class that was as exciting and as thrilling as this one and it had to be my number one pick for this collection. Do you agree with Dan's picks? Let us know and keep the conversation going online by using the hashtag UFC Connected. That wraps us up for another episode. I'll see you next time.